Hello and welcome to another episode of Throttle Stop Garage. In today's episode, we're going to have a look at what we do when we discover that the hinges for our project car are completely worn out. All right, so this is the trunk hinge for the car and you can see it's well past its service life. So this one's well worn out. The other one's just the same and they no longer enable me actually to set the panels in the correct position on the car. That's the problem every time. I've also gone ahead and made pretty much every panel for this car out of carbon fiber. So they're a lot lighter than the original panels, which is also going to be a problem, but we'll cover that in another episode. Okay, so as with a lot of these sorts of hinges, the pivot points just wear out over time. Again, we're working with a car that's sort of 60-ish years old, actually almost more than that, but it's quite old. Um, and these were never supposed to rotate on the pin, right? So <laughs> these were supposed to rotate around a bushing and the pin was meant to be fixed. All that's happened is paint and rust and things over time have seized that joint, then making it so that you're rotating on the part that was never intended to be rotated and it didn't last very long, as you can tell. Now, luckily for me, uh, there is an aftermarket hinge available. So at $50 a piece, it's not even worth fixing these. But I'm gonna show you what happens every single time you buy an aftermarket part. All right, so full disclosure, I've never actually put the carbon fiber parts that I've made completely on the car. So that's gotta change. And as I'm getting cleaned up with some of these stupid little jobs, then I've thought, mm, trunk hinges, gonna need them. All right, at this point, we're not out of the woodwork yet. I've just got the one hinge changed. So I've changed for the new hinge on the far side. So that's the driver's side. Here on the passenger side, I've still got the original hinge in. Of course, I'll change out for the new hinge when I get there. It's taken a lot to get the fit and we're still not out of the woodwork yet. So this has got to come down a little bit here, but I think you can see on the far side, just barely. It's hard to, hard to video this stuff, but the fit here is okay, but I would say it's just okay, right? So we still have a little bit of work to do here. Again, a little down in the corner. You're always trying to match the panel that can move to the panel that can't move with this kind of stuff. But you'll see the problem as I get things propped up. Okay, so as we prop things up and I balance it on my head, you can see the problem over here is now the bolts, these bolts that are supposed to go in here, we're now completely out of adjustment, right? So we've got... I mean, they're way up, they're past the hole, completely out of the hole here. So I've jacked this hinge up further than it should go. Like it's way, way up. I'm past, like I'm sitting right on the threads. It's not where this wants to go. So we're going to have to cut and bend these hinges. There's just no way around it. Um, out of adjustment here as well, which you can see, right at the end of the slot. So I'm full forward here, which isn't good. And with the carbon fiber parts, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the way this would have been done in the factory was, you know, Olaf or whoever got uh, a, a block or something, jammed the hinge, and then just give it a heave and bent everything, right? So you can bend the hinge into where you need it. With the carbon fiber component, again, it's, it's, it's bull strong. I'm pretty sure I couldn't hurt it if I hit it with a sledgehammer. But I really don't want to, like, I don't want to bend it. I don't want to try on the off chance I end up damaging something here. So what we're going to do is we're going to carefully cut the hinge uh, and then we'll bend it into the position that it needs to be cut into, tack it up and weld it in place. We have to put the brackets for the gas struts on anyway. So really no cost or loss there. I think it'll be a little easier to do. So I'm going to set this hinge now. I'm going to take the, the uh, old hinge out on the other side. I'm going to put both the new hinges in and uh, see where we sit. And as soon as I know that, then we'll start uh, the cutting and fiddling around until I, I want everything to sit nicely in the range of adjustment. I still have the gasket on. So this is the original gasket for the car. And if you're doing this sort of work, right, you do want to make sure you're fitting your panels with the gasket in place. All right, so just to help work this out, I've mounted one of the other 
new hinges on my bench. I've just mounted it to a, another one of the props that I use all the time when I'm welding. Um, so this is the hinge in the down position. So if you remember, what we need to do is it needs to move in so that I can get the adjustment back on the deck lid itself. So that point of the hinge has got to come more towards uh, the body of the car. And when the hinge was in the proper position, the bolts that are attaching it up here and back here into the body of the car, they were full up. So that means it needs to move down. So this needs to move in and up, right? So we need to do that. So to get it to move in, we're going to need to bend here at this point. That'll get us in. But as we move that in, that will also change this angle. So we're going to have to cut the fabulous welds here, which are really quite gross. Uh, so we'll cut it here and we'll, I may just try bending it here instead of cutting it here and we'll see how we make out. So right at that point, right at this point, and we'll see if we can get it to come up and then in a little bit. So it needs to go that way and that way. Anyways, it's easier than explaining it in the car, what needs to happen. All right, so I think we can start to see what the problem might be. Let's have a look in. 61.4 degrees. It's 59 and a half. Brand new hinges. 64. And 65. So we've got <clears throat> give or take we got about five degrees too much on the new hinges <clears throat> that's what's causing the problem so we're going to have to get these kind of chopped up and working uh, in order to get any of this to work so there's nothing else to do with it you can shim it you can do whatever you like but in this instance it's already been cut once it's just ended up at the wrong angle so we're going to just uh, get the grinders out and get to work ah uh, what's five degrees between friends okay so the original attachment mechanism for the torsion bars that are the springs on this trunk, they got to go. So that gets chopped out. Then the doubling plates that are in the things to make sure that whatever happens with that torsion spring doesn't destroy the world. I got to cut out all those spot welds and hammer those plates out. Don't worry, there's a strengthening part going back in. And then I just start the basic process of measuring all of this stuff and trying to find out where the differences are. We already know the angles are wrong. Now we can see the three millimeter difference between where they mount uh, and that forward position onto the, onto the trunk. So that's an eight, another eighth of an inch, and they're just starting to stack up. No wonder I couldn't get these hinges to actually set anything in place. So I tried to pull some angles. I tried to do this the easy way first, folks. I really wasn't looking for a month-long adventure on hinges. But, right, so get the angle tool welding magnet thing out. Pull some angles off of it. Try to figure out, all right, well, if I just cut that hinge in that spot there I can maybe without doing too much work get this thing moved around and get it into the right place built a quick jig did a little bit of tacking and welding hit it with a hammer every once in a while <laughs> just to see if I could get it to work and you know what <clears throat> fought me every step of the way so let's just sit back relax and watch the frustration take over Okay, that's the first one done. Ever <laughs> a lot better with the angle. So the angle this way is no longer all over the map. Um, and what I did for the jig, just because it was hard to see, uh, the hole, the big hole here that the bolt goes through is 5 8 So I happen to have a 5 8 pin and a jig for something else. The stop keeps it perpendicular uh, to that face, so that's going to be okay. And then what I'm doing is I'm using the original hinge. I set I set this end of the jig to be right at the edge of the bench. 
So when I, again, I don't only need to correct the angle of the hinge, but I wanted to move the mount points uh, more towards the body, right? So that the trunk can actually pull in. So I've now got seven mil, which is what I wanted, which is half the hole because I was out of hole before. So <laughs> I'm going to do up the other hinge here and then we'll mount it on the car and see how we do. I'm not saying it's right at this point and that's why it's only tacked up, but we'll we'll see. We've certainly given it a good run for its money. Okay, so I didn't show you the other part. I'm just going to show you the end result, which is me taking the grinder and chopping it up into very small parts. Uh, so I built the other hinge. I got everything set. It was absolutely perfect. And then I put it in the car and nothing worked. <laughs> so it was back to the drawing board. Uh, you got to walk away sometimes uh, when you're building this stuff, because if you don't, you'll end up throwing it across the shop. Now, as you can see, things have escalated a little quickly here. So uh, how can I say this? Uh, I cut it twice and it's still too short. Anyway. So in the moving of these holes back, uh, I've changed up all the geometries here and it's just not working out. Um, and I'm chasing my tail. So I've been at this for a couple of days. It's starting to drive me a little bit nuts because you're putting the trunk lid on and off and on and off and on. And anyway, it just kind of continues ad nauseum. So there's no point. So now what we're going to do, which I think is the only way to do it, is we're going to bolt that part to the trunk lid. This hinge will put in its correct position into the car and then i'm going to lock myself in the trunk of the car <laughs> what else can i do and then i'll just create a pattern to go from here to there um truthfully what's wrong is everything like these legs here are only different by uh, an eighth of an inch but this is an eighth of an inch shorter than the stock hinge this has to be longer this part over here i needed to move down because the trunk lid needed to come down to settle into the right place and I needed to move these holes forward because my trunk lid I think I may have located the mounting holes about again about four or five millimeters in the wrong place I just followed what I pulled out of the mold so I thought it would be okay it's either that or where I put the inner structure onto the hood is in a little bit of the wrong place so there's a lot of variables at play. I need to start limiting the variables or else the job will never get done. It's already been way too long. Um, so this should get me to home again. No big deal at this point. I think what's going to happen is we're just going to end up lengthening this probably uh, that much, which is not a lot. But who knows? The whole thing might be completely borked once I'm inside the trunk. We'll find out. Stay tuned. Okay, here we are at the back of the car. So all I've done is put a clamp on the lid to sort of hold it in place. You can see the gaps aren't perfect and we're not exactly 100% down. This would still need to go down a little bit. But the far corner is up. Oh, hard to see. Up just a little bit. And it's sitting out at the bottom you're never going to see that but it's sitting out at the bottom differentially right so it's not too bad here again a little out here and then it gets good through the middle section and then it's out again so oh, we got some fitment issues clearly but it's on the car so you know we're close i can get most of this to work but with the carbon fiber stuff, there's not a lot of options for filler, so you really do have to make sure the fit is good. But I had a lot of problems when I made this part. Anyway, so now we're going to go under the car and we're going to climb up. And I'll show you what we've got. A couple of lights under here, but mostly just me. Okay. Okay. Boop. Now. Okay, so we're now inside the trunk. Ooh, scary. All right, so of course it can come down a little bit more. So that's gonna be okay. Fitment along this edge is good. 
right? And then up along here is fine. And then we can see the hinge. Here's the problem. So I'm going to need more angle here. This is going to have to come kind of straight down. This is the full down position for the hinge, right? Now it doesn't sit in the full down position. So we have to set a position for it. And we have to do that consistently <laughs> between the two hinges. So I got to take some measurements. I got to figure that out. I think down is probably not there. Down is probably something about like that. So it's not nearly as bad as it looks. Uh, and then the problem is barely visible. But right up here, you can see the inner frame is hitting against the rail that holds the seal. And I can just move that back with a hammer. I'm not too worried about that. The rest of this is all looking pretty good, actually. I'm turning around here. All right, similar story on the other side. Right, so we can come down a little further here, just generally, and here a little bit. All right, so I'm not too worried about this kind of stuff because I can pull, well, you can see there, I can pull this down until I would be tight and level with the body on the top. Same story with the hinge again. I think it's about here. So I just need to get a little patch made from here to here once I've set this depth the same way. But miracle of miracles on this side, like I've got a good gap here. Oh, my theory is that the body on these cars isn't all that consistent. Uh, <laughs> it's as consistent as it ever was in 1966. Um, so just a few taps with a hammer here and there, we're going to get this thing to fit. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to shut her down, get this all sorted out. I'll get a pattern made and I'm going to get this project put to bed because God, I'm sick of looking at it. Okay. Here we are at the back. You can see the gap here is not too bad. This is the bottom of the trunk. Again, no one's ever going to see this, uh, but into the far corner, it's not too bad. It's pretty good. I can take care of it mostly but when we get out towards the driver's side we lose it right so over here my little pointer right then the gap gets pretty big here all right so that's never gonna do you know we're three four mil away and we know what's causing it now because we've gone inside the truck and had a look so when we were looking inside the trunk, we now know what's causing the problem. Okay, so underneath here, there's a gasket run tray, and then this is sitting here. I can still trim this back quite a distance, but I'm butting up against that, which means this corner can't go the way it has to go, which is this way. Okay, so this side's gotta go this way, up towards the immovable part, which is the cowl piece here. Uh, by where the back window goes. This is sort of fun to watch back for me because I'm I'm sort of watching myself figure the problem out. I don't actually know entirely what the problem is right now, but as normal, I don't really have fear of it. So I'm going to just go after it and see if I can get it to fit. So what I know is if the trunk lid won't fit without the hinges, the trunk lid will never fit with the hinges. Again, I've got the hinges cut now. We're going to get this thing in. Here's what I found out on the back side of the car. Okay, so the fit in here, again, not that bad. Uh, and then through the middle, it's quite good. Like this is all right, you know, like give or take a little bit, that'll be fine. Um, this corner is bad. And originally I thought it related to up on the top uh, and it being stuck, but then as I feel this corner, there's a massive dent, not a massive dent, but there's a dent in here. So this car has been hit at some point and it's just knocked the panel in. Uh, so the trunk lid's fine. <laughs> it's one of those things where the trunk lid's fine, 
but the panel underneath it has got a dent so I'm gonna have to bring that panel out I was planning on replacing the whole panel so when I replace the panel I'll make that panel fit uh, this uh, trunk lid as good as I can again not a, not upset about any other parts of it it all seems to be fitting in really nice so I'm gonna go inside and show you what my solution is for pulling this down um, and we'll have a look at that all right get my leg in here The advantage of having a welding helmet with a light on it is I can double it up as a flashlight. Excellent. What I did, which you can see here, is I've made myself a little eye bolt just with a standard screw and a piece of chain I had lying around the garage. Uh, and then I've got a strap on it here. And you can see that with that, I can pull this down really tightly into that gasket. There's kind of nothing else I can do unless I'm prepared to move the entire run down, like the whole channel down, which I'm not prepared to do. Uh, I can sand, of course, the skin on either side and shrink it up a little bit, but we need to get it close. So then what we're gonna do with the hinge is because we don't really have you know exactly the right place to put it and it looks like I'm gonna have to loosen things off and adjust this hinge just a bit before I do anything but I'm gonna jam this little fillet piece that I made fits in here in behind the hinge okay and then we'll hold that hinge so both hinges can have the same stop right so they're gonna come down to the same location with that with that part in there. And then I've got just some little fillet pieces and we're gonna just set the little fillet piece in here, right? Tack it up. Okay, so we'll get that welded in uh, so that everything will be down and tight and welded in place inside the car. And then I can take this, I can take the hinge and everything else out of the car and go ahead and fabricate the pieces that I need to get all the angles right and everything else and stop chasing my tail. So that then when I bolt that hinge back in, it's gonna pull uh, the trunk lid down. Again, this trunk lid is bull strong. We're not talking about a steel trunk lid here. This is uh, carbon fiber built to a little bit crazy standard. So it's gonna be awfully hard to move it, but I know it will move just a little bit. Okay, so with that, uh, <laughs> It's tight in here, folks, so I'm going to shut the cameras off, uh, get a few other things that I need now that I'm in here, uh, tighten it down, check it probably 10 times to make sure I'm comfortable with it, tack it up, and it'll be about 10 minutes of work once I get done. Okay, with that, see you in a bit. Right, after all of that work, we're now actually down just a hair which is perfect. It's right where I want it. So this corner here is gonna to need to come up just a bit, but it's good here along the panel and then it's all right. And that far side with all the monkeying about. So this part here, you can see we're now good. So we've not done anything here other than change a little bit of the shape of that rail where the um, where the gasket lands. So I changed that again. I've got the pole here attached to the roof there, uh, putting a little weight just over on that corner. Again, the whole thing is not sitting perfect. And just like every old car, this one's got a history and I'm finding out I've owned this car since 2006 and I'm still finding things out about it I didn't know. So you can't see me, but I've already welded that underneath. Now watch as I set the gap underneath the car. Hey, we could open it. Woo. Okay, now with the clamping all off, like this is fine. A little high here maybe, but I'm not worried because I have a dent right here. Like it's on this panel. This is dented in right over the hinge. So the lid's a little high, just a touch. But through the middle it's good, which is where it's good. And then you can see once again at the far end, everything came up roses for a change, folks. So over here, this spot, 
This spot here is now good. And you can see it right across the edge. That'll do. I'm not too sure how good this is going to show up or how well this is going to show up. But you can see here, there's about a million beat marks on this bumper right there. Okay, so that was the impact, obviously. Here, they've had to drill a hole there and fill it or do something with it. Get the light up here a bit. Okay, so there's evidence there that it's been hit. But if we go here to this panel where I've scraped all the undercoating off, you can see it, it looks pretty good, but there's a wrinkle right here. And then along the edge, it's spot welds wrinkle here, wrinkle here. So as we're going towards the driver's side, it's getting progressively wrinklier. And then there's like a good old wrinkle right there. That's the, the key. It's just a little bit, right? But we're only ever talking about a millimeter or two with this car. It's just not quite there. Okay, so that's that. But now if we go up, and in, let me show you what happens. This is like garage yoga of the worst order. I never noticed this. Again, I've owned this car for it seems like a million years. Okay, back panel. Right? Um, this is the panel that's the problem. Here, you can see if we shine some light from outside like this not sealing right this is not coming up it doesn't matter what I do I bring it down and I'm not sealing here against this edge I'm sealing at the middle but towards either edge I'm not sealing okay so let's look through the holes through the looking glass here and see what we can see I never noticed this before today and I'm sort of hoping you can see it. Yeah, you get a good example of it right there. You can see where the holes have been drilled, right? And somebody has just pumped the area full of Bondo, right? So that's indeed where the damage was through the middle. And that's just punched this, it's just punched this panel in. Uh, so we're gonna need to bring the whole panel back out the easiest way to do that is to release it here. This panel is still good. I can get that panel. So I'm going to buy this panel, undo all the spot welds when I'm on to body work, and we'll get that all fixed up at that point. But you can see how the rest of it's turned out. And you see I've just put the little tabs on it here to hold things where they need to be. That's good enough for now. So now we'll unbolt all this nonsense, get this all fixed up and next we'll just rebuild this section of hinge so we're just going to build from here uh, to there we'll make it in one part and make it nice because there's no making anything nice out of that nonsense okay so we'll get that done and then we're going to be finished Woohoo! I love laying out parts anyways these ones got done pretty quickly just an evening's worth of work once the patterns are made to get this all finally touched up what a haul to get through this um, just carefully measuring the widths because I don't want to deal with any more inaccuracies here so anyway let's sit back relax and get ourselves through to the end
after all that work you can see we're done and it looks pretty good I gotta say <laughs> it's a bit crazy but here's the originals so if we throw the angle gauge on it here we got 60 and a half so within a tenth of a degree for the originals that's pretty good and then the ones that we just finished not the same angle we're different by a degree or so which isn't going to matter because everything's a little different by a little bit and between the two again we're off about a tenth here so that's just fine the main difference is in the height so i hope it's obvious but this set here is shorter than this i think it's a lot easier to see there so we've had to take the holes move them down in essence changing this pivot point to fit things better and either way you sliced it it was never going to work with those hinges as i purchased them never in a million years they were different by uh over five degrees i'll have to check the video and we'll we'll put it up there maybe somewhere to tell you what the difference was but they were uh, not at all the same completely different and you can see these have finished up uh, really rather nicely you'd never know that i built them from here to here that's all that's all me so now all that's left and we're not going to do it in this video we're going to save it for another video um because that's more more than enough for this but one of the other factors the reason we're starting in on this other than the worn out hinges for these was of course the spring that drives these is way too heavy with a carbon fiber part the carbon fiber part is roughly half the original mass so it's not going to work so i've had send cut send do up some brackets for me so we're going to be able to attach a gas strut to the whole thing right so these are going to go on the deck the angle parts go on the deck these are the reinforcing parts for the angle parts these are the bits that i weld onto here in the end oh, they go there you'll find out in the next episode anyway thanks again to send cut send for uh, sponsoring the channel so we now have a nice relationship with the good folks at send cut send so don't forget uh go check out those people that support uh those of us that are here making content all right with that let's wrap it up well if you stuck it out all the way to the end congratulations that's awesome uh glad that you're still here anyway there's the finished hinge you can tell here again who's ever gonna know that these have been changed. No one's ever gonna know that these hinges have been changed out and they've been heavily modified. So these work now, I've sided them and you saw me stamp the metal. So that's the driver's side hinge. There's a passenger side hinge and it's because that carbon fiber part is not absolutely perfect side to side. I mean, I drilled the holes right where they were supposed to be to put the captive nuts on, but they ended up in slightly different locations to allow me to adjust the trunk lids still. So they've turned out pretty well, but for now it's been a month. I chased my tail on this forever, as I do with most of these things, as you would do in your own garage with your own projects. There's nothing much you can do when the parts that you get from the aftermarket varied by wild amounts. They weren't, they weren't close. They look right. We'll give them that. They look right, but they would never open a trunk lid. Uh, and that is a consistent frustration. Anyway, we fixed the frustration, showing you one method to do it. I'm sure there's going to be others, but that's one way that works, is that sort of cut and chop method with a little bit of thought. I thought it was going to be easier than it was, but I always think it's going to be easier than it is. Anyway, with that, thanks for coming along for the ride. Appreciate all the likes uh, and views that I get. Don't forget, uh, help the algorithm find me. Right? <laughs> I'm never going to make it to 100,000 subscribers. I know it. I get it. Uh, I don't even really much mind. It's just a conversation between you and me, and I like that more than most. Anyway, that's um, a thumbs up always helps. A subscribe for all the people who aren't subscribed. Uh, we bring content out as often as I can get around to it. I still have my regular day job, so um, this isn't fake. It's not Hollywood. Anyway, we're doing what we can, but in the meantime, we'll come back and we'll show you how we're going to solve the problem of putting some gas springs on things. Uh, and with that, we're done. Keep your stick on the ice. <laughs>